Dear Heavenly Father, yes, your Holy Spirit would guide us as we study tonight. Thank you so much for the word, your word, and it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And by it, you have kept our feet from the paths of the destroyer. Mm -hmm. so, uh, okay, good, good. I pray that you would um, please forgive us for our sins. We thank you that that you sent Jesus because you loved us so much and you wanted to be with us and there was no other way but for him to be nailed to the cross for us and to shed his blood for us. And so, Lord, we, we thank you and we pray that you would help open our minds to realize more and more really what that means and to draw closer to him and to be a blessing and a witness. And we thank you for all your blessings in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Okay. So let's put up Acts six. I mean, yeah, Acts six. Okay. Let's get that up. Okay. Is there anyone who would like to read? All right, I want to start. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we'll give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. Most of us are familiar with this, correct? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to know what that was all about, the distribution of food, waiting on tables. Okay. What's that talking about? I think they all ate together, didn't they? I got the... No, well, in the, the new church, they, they were sharing. They were sharing everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, they, they just, so them saying waiting on tables just meant like, we got to start giving out the food. That's not, you know, we have other things more important to do. It's not like it was a restaurant and they were handing out plates yeah. of food. Yeah, it, no, um, it could be that they were just, uh, maybe people were coming and getting food, like the way we give food away uh, at the Good Neighbor Place or something, you know, like that. Well, uh, yeah, because it's talking about the um, the widows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the ones that were in need. Mm -hmm. They weren't getting their their share yeah and and we the church is to take care of you know our widows make sure that they are being you know they're okay and um and they took that seriously back then and there was some grumbling and complaining evidently because that wasn't that wasn't happening and so they made it they took it seriously and they got together and they they assigned certain people to do that because they weren't going to give up preaching the gospel but they had to do both you don't can't just do one or the other you have to do you have to do it all <laughs> okay let's go to the next any unless there's anyone anyone else want to add something to that I think there was well the way they mentioned the widows and the orphans it was that the, the women if they be, if they became a widow if they didn't have like a grown-up son to to mm. uh, help them, they were they was they were like beggars because they they were not allowed to work. Mm. So th those poor ladies, if they had no husband and they didn't have any grown sons, they were up the creek, and that's why okay. yeah. they mentioned that they had, they had the responsibility of helping the widows and orphans. Yeah, I think the a... I think the Hebrew the Hebrews were uh, to some degree. Uh, Boarding over the Greeks, you know there was a t there was tension there between those two, the Hebrew group and the and the Greeks. So this is why the Greek ladies were being uh, neglected, or the Hebrew uh, the Greeks were being neglected. And that's why this issue started. So you know these issues have, have been within the church for a long, long time, haven't they? 
issues of, of preference, uh, people uh, having, you know, a preference over someone else. And so that's what was going on here. And the apostles picked up on that and they said, this has to be taken care of right away. Mm -hmm. But you notice that they the were saying this, this needed to happen other than the disciples who were doing the preaching. It needed yeah. to be a different group because they were already having something to do. Mm -hmm. and so they needed to have a different group. And this is where the the next group came from. Mm -hmm. It was all part of organizing the church and getting getting organized because they didn't have that um, layer of responsibility before. They were the, the elders were doing everything and you can't run that way. Yeah, so I see for one thing, you don't want any small group of people or you know one person doing all the work, you know, that it has to be spread out, not only because for the benefit of the people that are are doing the work, but also for the other people that they get the opportunity to participate. So because that's how you grow in your, in your Christian walk is by doing service and serving Absolutely. other people in the church. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next. Mm -hmm. um, Maria, could you read um, starting in verse 8 through at least 8 through 10? 8, 8, 8 through 10. Cal, you want to move it up a little? Oh, okay, because we didn't do five. So oh, we didn't? Oh, oh, never mind. Uh -huh. Go back. You want Start, five to seven? Thank you, Carol. Five Starting verse five, five through ten. Thank you. This, pro this proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of Holy Spirit, also Philip, Horus, Nicander, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert of Judaism. They present these men to the disciples who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Stephen. Oh, hold on. Let's just say, you know, that let's just say that that worked, didn't it? That was yes. that was God showed favor on this organization that they did this organizing it was it was profitable for them okay go ahead go back <laughs> before you before you go I'm, I'm assuming that philip was a different philip than one of the disciples yeah i think so yes is that right yes you're that's right but you know it's mm -hmm. interesting out of this group we have some great leaders that came out so i'm grateful for this organization because they had as you mentioned philip and of course, who was the other one that came up as a result? Thomas? Stephen. And of course, Stephen. I'm sorry, Stephen. Yeah, yeah so that that was a good good uh, move. The part and, of the the, and all these names, like, what? why do you think, like, all these names? Why does the Bible always have all these names in it? Like, and, and they're names that we're not even familiar with, some of them. Document history. Yeah history and and people you know each person is important and mm -hmm. maybe where it's important to learn people's names maybe that's why i don't know and some of those names don't sound very jewish i think they must have been some of the, some uh, of the yeah. other nationalities uh -huh. converts, from converts. Other... Mm -hmm. yeah that's... By, by mentioning names and and dates and and places it gives it gives more uh, authenticity to the Bible it gives more uh, truth, truthfulness to the Bible, so that you, we we always know they say the Jews were very careful record keepers. Mm -hmm. So that and so if you could depend on everything that they wrote historically, then the other things we can have we can be confident that those things are true too, because they were known as very meticulous mm -hmm. uh, record keepers. Oh, thank you. That's a really good point, too. Yeah, I think of like Matthew, the tax collector, you know, he had to keep really good records. Yeah. That makes sense. And they, yeah, they're known to be very good at, with money, especially. But yeah, any kind of records, right? Yeah. Okay, back to the text, Maria. Okay. Now, now, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. 
Opposition rose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. How much more you want? Um, go ahead and read verse 11. Then, then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we've heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified. This fellow never stopped speaking against the holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. And okay. all can we um, talk while we're looking at the text? And Carol, can you scroll it back up a little bit, just a little bit to the beginning where, so we can see the custom. Yeah, perfect. Um, so let, can we talk? It works, right? We can still talk while we're looking at it, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to know what the great wonders were. That It doesn't identify what Stephen did, but I, I wonder what were the great wonders that he performed with power that the people recognized. Which te which verse is that, Matt? I, I, I'll write it the first one, eight. Oh, oh okay. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs. signs among the people. So, I mean... The disciples did signs and wonders too, right? When Jesus was still alive, maybe miracles, healing, yes, like that. Yes, mm -hmm. they they yes. they did. They were they were anointed, and they and they went around doing God's work. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Stephen did a lot of talking and and stepping on their toes. And then mm -hmm. it just like jumps right in. I mean, that's one verse that Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. And no sooner did that come out of Luke's pen or whatever than opposition arose. And remember, it's just like you can't do anything good without what is this? What is this? You know, I mean, no, no good deed goes unpunished, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. So, no bad <laughs> yeah. So apparently, this this Stephen must have been a, a a leader in the church even before this recognition, because he says he are men full of God's grace and power, did wonders and miraculous things happen. He was very astute. He was a great student of the Bible because they could not this is it, but they could not stand up against his wisdom mm -hmm. the, by whom they by whom he spoke. Right in verse. So 10. he was, yeah. He was uh, he was he was well seasoned well seasoned Christian and well seasoned leader I believe. So there was nothing really that they could say against him. I mean the, the it doesn't tell the Bible does not say anything at least so far anything that it almost reminds me of Daniel or Joseph and or way. or Jesus they were well, looking you know looking for trouble looking for lies making up lies. Mm -hmm. yeah they that so verse 11 they they yeah. see it's like they weren't they weren't that. local they weren't local guys either they, uh, they, they, they were from all over they weren't just strictly from the jerusalem area where all the things went down with jesus and you know so what stephen was preaching yeah they may have heard some but maybe not as much knowledge as the local people would have uh-huh I'm wondering why some of our local people there of the church didn't stand up for Stephen. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Why did they let him be taken into the Sanhedrin? That's a good question, Betty, because we, you know, have you ever been, I don't know, we've, we've been a member of smaller, some smaller churches where um, some Somebody got mad at the pastor because he didn't do things the way that we always do them or whatever. And he started <laughs> like really being rude and, and it's hard to know, like, I mean, do we just let things play out or do we, 
stick up for our pastor or what could, you know that's kind of a hard um a hard yeah it's a good question why why wouldn't they why wouldn't they stick up for him and say no he's a he's all genuine but i think they knew they knew that he was genuine they were maybe jealous Yes, that's what I think. I think it's jealousy, perhaps. I think they, they were um, also very, they were very fearful of the leadership. The priests, remember, were still spying on the disciples. They were very afraid of the, the leadership in that area, getting uh, persecuted. Okay. So they were afraid of persecution, and they wanted Stephen to kind of, you know, to tone, it down, tone it down a little, right? This, don't get us in trouble does that remind you of like well before, jesus when jesus told mm -hmm. them not to tell anyone like when they got healed and stuff don't tell anyone don't tell anyone it, my time hasn't come yet but then once yeah. once his time came mm -hmm. and it's time now it's time to tell everyone so so that's no no reason to stop I, it's right it's time it's time to Reach the gospel, even though persecution may result. Christine, yeah, no, I was just agreeing. I was just agreeing with with what you're saying. It's about yeah. that possibility to, yeah. yeah, and jealousy, as you said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. jealousy and fear, and probably a, a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. You know, probably come from the same. You know, these verses. It started out like it, it seemed as though it was very soon after the, res the uh, Jesus went back up to heaven. But then it ends, uh, we we know that they, they're gonna take Stephen away and kill him. And I thought that was three years later. So in those few ver verses. Yeah, it just happens. So they, they picked the, the seven elders three years later? Uh, mm -hmm. The commentary says it wasn't, it wasn't that long um, from his conversion that uh, that he was stoned. I was just I was just looking that up. Mm. Um, I, I'll find it and get back to you. Mm -hmm. oh, well, I mean, that says they 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 had to pick the the seven elders to mm -hmm. what to, to take care of the needs of the people, and then two verses mm -hmm. later, they're uh, they're already mad at him. Yeah, and yeah, wanting so to kill him. So he must have developed his good reputation in the local church rather quickly then because mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. was it just been maybe it just spanned the three years from mm -hmm. from verse eight to verse 12 mm -hmm. or three, three and a half years or three and a half so mm -hmm. any other thoughts you still looking mac yeah, I've lost it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we looked at uh, seven already. Uh, verse seven, I was just noticing okay, this, might, this might give us a little light if we think about this. So the word of God spread the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly that i think that's what caught their attention the the priests and the elders he said a large number of priests became obedient to the faith and they were concerned that they were losing their own membership following stephen stephen mm -hmm. must have been a great preacher just like uh mm -hmm. peter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the number in jerusalem was increasing rapidly wow they should be uh, concerned mm -hmm. because they're losing their own membership. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Let's go down where we were, where we left off, and um, oh, that's it. Acts six is only fifteen verses. Yes, I don't think we did um, fourteen and fifteen, okay. or somewhere around there. Would anyone like to read that, 14 and 15? Oh. Well, we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place. Oh, shoot. I can't. You got it. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't see the end because your pictures went on the top on the side. 
with the little. Um, but we have we we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that this face was like the face of an angel. Hmm. You know, it's almost like history repeating itself. They, yes. they, they were they were accusing Jesus, and now this time later, yeah. uh, it's like they forgot everything that transpired, and they just went right back to, well, what to them was the numbers. history repeating mm -hmm. itself. Mm hmm and the, the numbers were growing so fast, the word of God was spreading, um, and they they couldn't they couldn't handle that. Commentary did say that the priest, the issue on the priest, that none of the uh, people who had joined the church, it, it said something to the extent that, that none of them were priests, and they would go into the temple, um, and, and so it it's curious that that the priest didn't like the fact that these common people were spreading the word of God and they were quote unqualified mm -hmm. yeah. and, and popular and mm -hmm. with the power and the miracles that were being done showed that they were filled with the spirit and the Sanhedrin priests weren't. Mm -hmm. so they couldn't keep up with Stephen. Yes. Yes. They were losing members. They were losing the number congregants, Jewish congregants. They Plus they didn't agree with that Jesus was the Messiah so there's that they didn't agree with the theology but but they saw the power that was happening but what else is there besides besides power when you have the, the Holy Spirit is really working you have mm -hmm. you have power and light and what's the other thing influence influence mm -hmm. goes along with power Mm -hmm. It's interesting in verse 14, they say, we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. So they were spreading false information, you know, false information. That's a, that's a thing that we will see in the end, false accusations against God's people. Mm -hmm. You well, know. it was false, but yet it was true because Jesus did say that no longer it was necessary to do the uh, sacrifice sacrificial system. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. I mean, that was this, it was a, a partly true, and this is what's going to be deceiving the very elect at the end. We're, we're going to have to be very careful that we know what the truth is so that we yeah. don't fall for the same thing. Amen. Yeah, it was true that they were. It was causing a huge up upheaval. That's that's true. It was causing an upheaval, but it's it's not. It wasn't the gospel that was causing the upheaval. It was their rejection of the gospel that was causing the upheaval. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Um, Go ahead, Christine. Um, yeah, I was just wondering a question here. What can we learn from this? experience here with the, the early church and what happened with them i mean i'm seeing here this person full of faith that he sparked um so much negative reactions from the people of god you know it speaks to how connected were some of them really to to god and to the holy spirit um because it says wherein they stirred up, well, some of them stirred up others. I don't remember, but it was on the screen earlier. Do you want to put it up, want to put the text back up? It's verse eight. After the, right, and they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard speak, Stephen speak, but as famous words against Moses and against God. So I'm just saying that it's so important for us as God's people, you know, all of us to, be connected, you know, with the same spirit, with the spirit of God, so that we can identify God's spirit working in other people. Mm -hmm. Because clearly they didn't recognize that this was the spirit of God working in Stephen. So I'm just saying we can take from that for ourselves to learn that. Mm -hmm. We all need to be really connected to the Holy Spirit so that, you know, things like this won't happen among us. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 
I think wherever the spirit of God is working, there's going to be not just power and light influence, right. but, but there's going to be love. There's going to be love. Yeah. love. yeah. Amen. That's going to be part of it too. And in this case, you know, there was love. They realized that the, you know, everyone needed to be taken care of the widows. Yeah. Need care of. So there mm -hmm. wasn't, it wasn't just a mm -hmm. rushing, let's go, you know, preach the gospel and, you know, too bad if people are, you know, have needs yeah. of they they were they were serving you know spiritually mm -hmm. and physical needs of people and um mm -hmm. so that's one thing that i noticed too about it but let's okay go yeah. ahead another <laughs> yeah the the human heart doesn't change much over the years <laughs> mm. over the years yeah in some cases situations like that mm -hmm. still exist <laughs> in our world we have to be so careful Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah like what like what Betty was saying you know it's that's we're gonna have we're gonna have the same challenge and seeing mm -hmm. um, trying to make sure that we're not deceived yeah amen oh, maybe. you think the people that rose up against Stephen were new to the church if they were from Cyrene, maybe uh, they were they were the Greeks, okay. and the whole, the whole business that started that the the, the Greeks uh, were were complaining that the, their widows were not being treated fairly. So I wonder if they were they were more they were more new to the church. Yeah. were they? I mean, or was it Sanhedrin? It was it or was it, it both? Was the Sanhedrin. Yeah, I, at first I thought it was the church too, but then. It says the members of the synagogue. It didn't say Sanhedrin. Well, okay, but not church. You know, members of the synagogue, they weren't converted Christians. They were Jews, right? Hellenistic Jews and the other ones. The widows were. Is that what you're meaning? Oh, oh, those are the widows. Okay. But who were the ones that were doing this, making these accusations against Stephen? Yeah, let me go back to it. Were they Christians? Freed, they called the freedmen, whatever that was. They could have been new. Were they new or Christians or were they Jews? I don't think they were Christians. I think they were Jews. Okay, that's what I They were part of the problem. Mm -hmm. All that were sitting in the Sanhedrin. Opposition arose from members of the synagogue of the freedmen. Cyrene and Alexandria is, is Greece, isn't it? Jews, the Jews of Cyrene. Andrea. And, mm -hmm. Alex, and Alex. Alexandria. Asia. Mm -hmm. yes. I thought it was Alexandria was Greece. It's Egypt. Egypt. Oh, oh. Okay. Cilicia, Cilicia and Asia. Okay. Okay. So well, I still think it could have been outsiders new newer because they were repeating all the same things that jesus was accused of mm -hmm. very yeah. similar i think uh, if i may say something Kristen, yes, please. Uh, i don't know exactly what the history of it is but alexandra is is known to have been a uh like a university center uh like and, education and you mean education yeah all the education Educated people came out of Alexandria. The great uh, the Library of Alexandria was there in north, uh, northern Egypt. Okay. And so uh, maybe a learned faction of Jews who were not Christians. Mm -hmm. They were not Christians. Who were not Christians. No, they were, it says there they were Jews. Uh, came from that area and they had maybe uh, satellite representatives in different provinces of Asia, mm -hmm. uh, and then they all wanted to uh, muscle in, as it were, on mm -hmm. what was happening, mm -hmm. and, uh, and put a put a spanner in the Stephen spoke <laughs> Christianity. Really, am I using a lot of metaphors here? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I do, especially yeah, but we won't. <laughs> I mean, the political scene, you know, I mean, it's mm -hmm. just human nature and um, 
try, no, be nosy, being um, jealous, and trying to have get power, trying to all those things. Uh, all right, so should we go on to chapter? Yeah, seven? we're coming to the real excited bit now. Would anyone like to read? Then the high priest asked Stephen, are these charges true? This he replied, brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he leave, lived in Aaron. Leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After the death of his father, God sent him to this land where you are now living. He gave him no inheritance here, not even enough ground to set his foot on, but God promised him that he and his descendants after him would possess the land, even though at that time Abraham had no child. Just tell me when to stop, all right? Yeah, just go all the way through um, Patriarchs. verse 8, please. Uh, God spoke to him in this way. Four hundred years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated. But I will punish the nation that they serve as slaves. God said, and afterwards they will come out of that country and worship me in this place. Then he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision. And Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him eight days after his birth. Later, Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob became the father of the 12 patriarchs. Okay, just to bring everyone up to speed, which I think you already know this, but this is Stephen. He's, he's started, he's kind of, like giving a sermon, he's kind of going through the history of, you know, how God led his people, because they were supposed to be God's people, they were, they were God's people. So let's continue. Okay. Uh, no, just, we'll, we'll give Hugo a break. Would somebody else like to read? In verse starting in verse nine? Because the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph, they sold him as a slave into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles. He gave Joseph wisdom and enabled him to gain a good, the goodwill of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So Pharaoh made him ruler over Egypt and all his palace. Now, if any, I want, Betty, I want you to keep reading like all the way through verse 16. But if anybody yeah. has like an aha moment, you can interrupt her if you, you know, something really strikes you. So continue, Betty. But before you, okay. it seems to, me, seems to me that they, they should have been curious um, as to how he understood the history so thoroughly and could share it back with them since they were supposed to be the keepers of the law and That's knowing the law and yet here is a common guy who they were already trying to put down as inferior and as a blasphemer and yet he he knew the history as well as those priests probably and better probably better <laughs> I, I i think the mm -hmm. part of the jealousy was that he was reciting and teaching better than they had and and they didn't like that and he would had and he was articulate and he had the gift of you know he could put it all together and 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 just mm -hmm. speak like this that's it's somewhat mm -hmm. enviable I, I don't know if we should overlook the fact that in those in the Jewish culture everyone goes to church school mm -hmm. so Stephen would know that mm -hmm. everybody knows that but he felt he needed to build his case Mm -hmm. beginning with the history of the Jews. Because mm -hmm. right. uh, he's not finished yet. He's building up to a particular point. Right. But, and this is his part of his wisdom, right? This is part of like how he how he's going to respond to them. He's, he's going to start, you know, back at the beginning. And he was, mm -hmm. stuff for everybody. So he was on 
he was meeting them where they were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the way he was hitting all the way marks, all, mm -hmm. all the different high points that they should have known. And maybe they didn't understand exactly, but he hit it so hard that they understood. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. knew what they were doing. They had no excuse. So yes. at, this, at this point, it's um, almost 7.45. And um, I don't know if you guys want to continue, if you want to read the rest of Chapter 7 and get to the, you know, climatic part of it. Or do you want to save that for next week and do our prayers? Any it, thoughts? It goes, goes on quite a ways. It's it? a long sermon. Yeah, it's a long <laughs> sermon. Why don't we... Why don't we end here and well why don't you just well we know that he was just to giving the, the history. Why don't you just jump to the uh, the the response and then that'll oh, because that'll I want to hear the history, Maria. Oh. <laughs> oh, you don't know. For us. No, yes, this is I know, to be, but continue, I want to hear to be it. continued. To be continued <laughs> uh, This is like a story we like to <laughs> listen to. Absolutely. <laughs> we don't want to read the last page. <laughs> I know when I was a kid, I had books that I wanted my parents to read over and over and over, and they got awfully tired. But I loved <laughs> Sam Hill's <laughs> books, but over and over, never get tired. And All this, right. this should have been almost memorized, mm -hmm. and so they should be hearing familiar things and be happy and supporting. I think they were more jealous than ever. Uh, uh, Elena right. knew all of this. Mm -hmm. Who does he think he is? I mean, exactly. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, we know better than him. Right. Mm -hmm. I think he was proving his point. Uh, mm -hmm. they, were, they were accusing him of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting rid of the law of Moses, mm -hmm. saying things against God. He says, no. Uh, mm -hmm. I have the same roots as you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all come from the same place. Yeah. Don't understand because these were false witnesses. False witnesses for sure. Accusing him. So he was disproving their allegations. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and it also, you know, Christine said earlier, what can we learn from this? Number one, uh, we need to be familiar with our history. Mm -hmm. and, our, and, our and our children, our offspring, our next generation, they need to be fully mm -hmm. uh, well indoctrinated, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, biblical history as well as the uh, our own church's history. I don't know what the kids are taught these days, if they know anything about our early church fathers and, and mothers. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, don't yeah, I, thought, I thought also something that I don't know how it translates into into real life, but it said that they were amazed that he had the face of an angel. Mm, if we were yeah. in that circumstance, would we have a would I have a face of an angel at that particular time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and what does that mean to have a face of an angel? Mm, peaceful, peaceful. <laughs> it, it it made an impression on them. Mm -hmm. It was peaceful. recorded. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. And maybe some of them, it doesn't say, but maybe some of them were wooed by by the angel. <laughs> you know, maybe uh -huh. that that Stephen's reflection of of God was something. Well, we know that eventually, yeah, they there was at least one very powerful person that that was converted because of that. But I don't want to do a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it goes, it goes down. It goes down to verse fifty-seven of Acts seven. Now, all the all the history that he he taught them, he was repeated to them, and all, right, all that he said meant nothing to them. They still turned on him. Right. I can't we'll, wait to we'll finish that up all up next time. <laughs> <laughs> so, where um, where did we stop? Verse. He stopped at seven. Acts 7, 7, 10. 7, 10, I think it was. So we've read verse 10. Yeah. So okay. we'll, we'll start at 11. Okay. Would anyone like to pray with looking over the names that are in the chat and close off our study? 
Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. All right, let's have prayer, shall we? Yeah. Our gracious Father and our God who art in heaven, we thank you so much for the written word and that your Holy Spirit has been promised to guide us into all truth. And may our hearts and minds be open at all times so that we may be led into all truth. Our, our lives might be testimonies of the God whom we serve and in whom we trust. We commit into your hand at this time the particular names that have been um, placed on our prayer list and ask, Lord, that you'll visit each one, each individual, and as you did in Stephen's life, you'll cause great wonders and miracles to be performed in their lives. Mm -hmm. That uh, the, the spirit the atmosphere of the early church may be experienced in our time and that your name may be glorified and that many may be added to our third as a result. Pray, Holy Father, that you would not only be with uh, those on the chat uh, this evening, but you'd be with absent members, some absent because of sickness, mm -hmm. other reasons, and that your he hand of healing may be upon them. Pray to Lord for um, uh, Norm as he goes in for his uh, biopsy tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. Necessarily a pleasant experience, but I pray that you may help mm -hmm. him to be of calm spirit mm -hmm. and uh, resolve. And uh, we pray that uh, the results might be favorable as a result. We commit into your hand, uh, Elisa, she makes preparation for further studies and examination. Would you give her retentive memory and easy recall so that she may be successful in her pursuit? Mm -hmm. We pray to Lord for uh, those who are in the path of the hurricane, who may be afraid, who may be uh, anxious for the unknown, that you'll be with them as they lift their thoughts towards you. May they be comforted, that you give them wisdom, that they may take proper precautions, but that uh, they may put themselves uh, under the protection of your wings, and that holy angels may surround them as they call upon your name. Father, hear our prayer. Grant us our petition. Do for us much more than we can ask or desire of you. And uh, pray that you may be in our respective homes. Grant, O oh Lord, that the joy that we have in serving you may be caught, as it were, by our offspring. Yes. They, they too may have a walk, a, a, a memorable, meaningful walk with the Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you do hear and answer our prayer, because we've asked all these things, believing in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for watching the Serendipity Bible Study Group of the Apopka Seventh-day Adventist Church. We meet live on Zoom every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for one hour. We invite you to join us on Zoom whenever you can. Just click the link in the description of this video and feel free to leave us a comment or a prayer request. If you can't join us live, you can always watch like you are now. Thank you.